Hi everybody, I just got this new uh, Richard Robinson uh, Rosemary & Co brush set in the mail and I just wanted to share with you the opening of that and explaining to you a little bit about why I chose these particular brushes for my set and what's so good about them. So let's have a look and see what's inside. Oh, it's just like Christmas. So they've come all the way from England to New Zealand, which you can't get much further in about a week, uh, which is pretty fast and nicely packaged so they won't get broken. And they come with a brochure so you can see the rest of the brush range. They're really quite beautiful brushes and very well made. So let's take these brushes for a test drive and I'll show you why I love them so much. I'm going to paint this little still life for you. I'll start off with this one here, uh, which is great for a wash. Just dipping that into the gamsol. There's my pomegranate. So that's the block and finish. Now I'll just let that set up for a while. Just let that dry a little bit. I'll come back into it in about mm, 15 minutes. So what I like about this, I'll call it a pastry brush, um, as opposed to other pastry brushes, this is a one inch one, uh, apart from being really well made, it's actually, um, you can see that it's tapered. So it's a shaped brush, which means that if you want to, you can get uh, sharp lines with this if you, if you want to. So it gives you the option, whereas other pastry brushes don't have that option. Okay, so that's dried off a little bit now. And um, I, I really like to start gesturally like this because uh, I find that if you, the more gestural your start is, the more expressionistic your start is, uh, the more more expressionistic your final painting will be. So if you're trying to loosen up, then the looser you make your start, the looser your final painting will, will be. Obviously, if you start in with little, you know, pencil lines and trying to paint up to the line, stuff like that, and approach it that way and use really small brushes, um, you're going to end up with a very tight painting. And there's not many painters that come to me in a workshop and say, I really want to tighten up. They all say, I want to loosen up. Uh, so this is one of the ways I do that. And then I always say, just uh, pick the biggest brush that you would use for whatever you're gonna do. So it might be this one. And then use the next size up, which would be that one. So I'm gonna go ahead now and work with this one. This is actually the uh, natural hair brush whereas this is the synthetic brush. Um, the difference between the two is basically that uh, this will give a rougher finish. Uh, so you'll get more texture out of this, whereas this is a crisper finished edge on this and uh, the paint will just tend to come off a bit smoother. So for the start of the painting, I want it to be as rough as possible and I'm using the uh, natural hair brush for that. Now the good thing about having a lot of brushes is that when you get one dirty with one color and you need to say go into the yellow here, instead of washing this one out, you can just use another one. There's a lot of truth to the saying that an artist is only as good as their tools, which is why I encourage all my students to invest in good brushes like these. Um, if they bring crappy old brushes to my workshop, I just I love the look on their face when I give them my brushes to try out. It is priceless. I love these long flat bristle brushes because 
they're so nicely made that you can get a really fine line with just the tip of it if you want to uh, or just using it normally you get a, a really wide mark so it allows for a wide range of brush mark with just using the one brush Another thing I love about these brushes is that they have such long bristles that you can get a lot more paint into them which means you can paint longer with one brush load than you can normally. Um, and also that, uh, you know, these brushes do get shorter as you paint with them. Um, so why go and buy a short brush when your long brush is going to turn into a short brush anyway? Now this is the synthetic brush and I love using this brush for the finishing details because you can get very very crisp edge with it and um, because it's a flat I can uh, create really calligraphic brushwork just by uh, turning the brush as I go and using different pressures and that's another beautiful thing about these long bristles is that when you apply it to the canvas um, it curves to meet the canvas like that whereas if you're using a shorter brush it more drags and digs into the canvas whereas this just lays the paint off beautifully because you've got enough bristle there to curve onto the canvas and laying off that paint really beautifully. Something you can do with a clean dry brush is where you need blending, like here for instance, just whisk it a couple of times and you get a nice soft finish. So as I go I generally tend to work with smaller and smaller brushes but um, if I get too tight then I'll go back in with a big brush and uh, loosen up a little bit. Okay, so now we're down to the very smallest brush. This is this rigger or liner brush. And all I'm going to do with that is sign it. And now I get to pull the tape off. Rosemary and Code do uh, full range of all sorts of interesting brushes but these are the particular brushes that I use to get um, my style of, of painterly effects. So I hope you've learned something from that and uh, hope you buy some of these brushes. Go check them out. Happy painting. I'll see you in the next one.